Hey, in today's video, we're going to talk about Hashimoto's and the risk of thyroid cancer in children. Now, cancer is a scary thing. Uh, you know, I've come across it many times in, over my career, and you know, it's not fun to tell someone you think they have cancer, but it's also the right thing to do. And yes, Hashimoto's is associated with thyroid cancer in adults, especially if those adults have nodules. That's something that we know. But we're, there's kind of a less knowledge about how is that related to Hashimoto's in children, because yeah, kids can get Hashimoto's. Now, let me start by saying that thyroid antibodies, you know, which are like the little post-it notes, uh, sometimes those show up in kids and they're transient, right? Uh, they're there and then they go away. However, uh, in my practice, kind of the rules I follow is if uh, a kid has thyroid antibodies and their first degree relative, like their mom or a sibling or their dad, has known Hashimoto's, well then we're really going to be keeping our eye on those thyroid antibodies. Now, it's true, nothing may happen. The kid may be totally asymptomatic and nothing, nothing may be wrong. But if I start like this year and the kid's, you know, seven years old, and for whatever reason we tested their thyroid antibodies and those antibodies are positive, and I know that their mom or their dad or their sister has got Hashimoto's, like we know that, then that kid's going to be monitored. And the very first time some kind of health issue shows up, what we're going to be thinking about is the Hashimoto's. But remember, it may not be hypothyroid Hashimoto's because there's a little spectrum, right? There's euthyroid where you just have the antibodies but the TSH and the free T4 are normal. Then there's subclinical where you have the antibodies but the TSH is a little bit high. The free T4 isn't abnormal. And then there's full-blown hypothyroidism where the TSH is high and the free T4 is low and you have the antibodies. That can happen in kids too. It can happen at any time or it may not happen. But if a kid's got antibodies and they're detected, and the way I do things is we're going to usually test them at least once a year regardless. And if any type of health issue shows up, I don't care what it is, the first thing we're thinking about is it the Hashimoto's. Have they actually progressed to a place where the thyroid, the TSH is abnormal and the T4 is abnormal? Are they going to need thyroid replacement? You know, do I need to refer them out for that? But I'm also thinking about their immune system, right? And I put up a lot of videos about this, but the thing about Hashimoto's is the immune system is the thing you got to deal with. Yeah, if you don't make enough thyroid hormones, you got to get them replaced with levothyroxine or whatever. But if you don't do anything for the immune system, if you're not finding out your immunophenotype, if you're not doing things to regulate the immune system, if you're not finding out if there's other metabolic factors involved, then you're probably going to be in for trouble over the years. Okay, so now with that in mind, what this study found that was published uh, in the journal Thyroid last year was that there is a connection between Hashimoto's in kids and risk of thyroid cancer. Now again, the pediatric population they were looking at was uh, 19 and under. And they found that the risk of thyroid cancer was associated uh, not only with the Hashimoto's, but with uh, nodule size, there being just one nodule, uh, but it wasn't associated with the child's TSH levels at all. Okay, uh, And it was more commonly associated with a type of thyroid cancer called a papillary thyroid carcinoma. And among those variants, there's what we call the diffuse sclerosing variant. Uh, so this is really important. And the reason I'm telling you this is if you have Hashimoto's and you have kids, I beg you to make sure those kids are getting tested, right? Please don't wait and be reactive. Be proactive. Now, I'm not saying make a mountain out of a molehill, but at least know, hey, if I have Hashimoto's, there's a huge risk that my kid's going to have Hashimoto's, right? There's nothing you can do about that, that genetic risk. But what we can do is be proactive and find out, do they have the antibodies now? Is their TSH and free T4 altered now? And then we can start to be a, have a, you know, a, a rational sort of monitoring system, right? So anyway, uh, that's what I want to share with you. Again, I've put the uh, citations down here. So just remember, Hashimoto's is, in, is uh, definitely associated with thyroid cancer risk in adults and kids, especially with nodules, right? Um, but the good thing about it, most thyroid cancers uh, really aren't fatal, especially if you get them caught early. So I don't want to like, you know, raise the alarm and then like leave you guys hanging. Uh, but nonetheless, you got to make sure you're working with someone that understands all these things we just talked about. So uh, I'll see you next time.